uh, from this section we are starting with cardiac cycle. To understand this cardiac cycle we need to also remember the structure of heart and then we will be able to understand how this uh, contraction and uh, the movement or flow of blood takes place in the heart that is the cardiac cycle. It is completed in two parts basically but we will classify it according to the sections. So in cardiac cycle there is contraction of heart and relaxation of heart. So contraction of heart or uh, different compartments. Contraction is known as systole and relaxation is known as diastole. So we classify it according to these words systole and diastole. Now when we say systole that means contraction. And if we are talking of auricular systole, that means we are talking of auricles contracting. And if we say the auricles are relaxing, then we call it auricular diastole. And as the name says, cycle, that means it is going to continuously go on in a systematic manner. So we will quickly draw a small uh, diagram of heart so that we are able to correlate the changes as we discuss the auricular and ventricular contractions and relaxations. So this is the heart, the four compartments and we are not going to label anything here. Just for our reference we are keeping this. So from here the superior vena cava enters, then inferior vena cava and coronary sinus. This is the right auricle. Left auricle is receiving oxygenated blood from pulmonary veins and there are four openings here. So this is left auricle. From here the blood will be taken by, so I'm going to show this here and this is the pulmonary artery which is going to take, this is the valve which we call the semi-lunar valve and from here the aorta is going to arise and we are not erasing anything because we want the reference of all these things. So this is aorta, this is pulmonary artery, right ventricle and left ventricle. So now let us start with the upper compartment. We can start from anywhere because it's a cycle but we will start from here. Auricular systole. So the first stage is auricular systole. That means auricles are contracting. When auricles contract, whatever blood they have received from the pulmonary veins, that is from lungs, the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood from superior inferior vena cava. So when auricles contract, what all things are going to happen, that is what we will write down in this particular part. So first thing, when auricles contract, the blood comes into their respective ventricles. So first point, blood is pumped into respective ventricles. That means from the left auricle into left ventricle, this is the blood is going to come here from right, <coughs> so auricle to right ventricle, the blood is going to come here. <coughs> this is deoxygenated blood, this is oxygenated blood, one thing. What, are, what is the situation of the auriculoventricular wall? That means we are talking of these wall, the right auriculoventricular and the left auriculoventricular wall. This is tricuspid, this is bicuspid wall. So here both auriculoventricular, left and right auriculoventricular walls are wide open so that the blood from the auricles can flow into or can be pumped into the ventricles. So left and right auriculoventricular walls are open. We have also seen that the 
inferior vena cava has ball here and coronary sinus also has valves. So the valve of coronary sinus that is thebaceous and valve of inferior vena cava that is valve of eustachius. They must be closed. Otherwise, the blood will flow back into these veins. So now we have to see the next situation. The valve of eustachius and valve of thebaceous. They're going to close. And what is going to happen to superior vena cava? If you remember, we said that it enters the auricle through an angle. So when our auricles contract because of the contraction of the valve, a wall rather, this opening is going to close on its own. So, walls are going to close. Let us write down these. That is, the wall of eustachius and thebaceous. Close. And the openings of pulmonary veins and superior vena cava, they are also going to close due to contraction. They are squeezed basically by the contraction of the wall. So opening or openings of pulmonary veins and superior vena cava close so that all the blood from the auricles is pumped into the ventricle. There is no backflow of blood from auricles to these veins. What is happening is auricles are contracting. When they contract, the blood is pumped into respective ventricles. For this to happen, the auriculoventricular valves, they must be open. And the Valve of eustachius of inferior vena cava, valve of thebaceous that is of coronary sinus, these valves need to close to prevent the backward flow. Plus, superior vena cava is not having any valve and pulmonary veins also do not have valves, but their openings automatically get closed when the auricles contract. So this is also closed. Now for all this thing to happen, that is for auricular systole to take place, the time period which is required is 0.1 seconds. That means auricular systole lasts only for 0.1 seconds. Now, the blood is into the ventricles. So the next stage is going to be ventricular systole. This is ventricular Systole. That means now the ventricles are going to contract. And again, we'll see what all changes are going to take place when ventricles contract. We have also seen when we were talking about the structure that the walls of ventricles are much thicker as compared to the wall of auricles. And the wall of left ventricle is three times thicker than that of the right. It is basically, where are they pumping the blood? This is going to pump the blood to the lungs, which are on either side. And this compartment has to pump the blood to all the body parts. And that is why its muscles are even thicker. Now, when, sorry, when ventricles contract, what is going to happen? The first thing that has to happen is closure of auriculoventricular wall. These two compartments are going to close and there is... Force is also more. So with that force, the chances are that the blood may go back into the auricles. So to close these auriculoventricular valves, the papillary muscles here, we have we had drawn these papillary muscles to which these cordy tendini are attached, they contract. And because of which the cordy tendini, they are stretched so that the auriculoventricular valves, which were open. Now let us Come back to this. When auricles were contracting, the auricular ventricular valves are open like this. Now, when ventricles contract, these valves should close and they should not move backward. To prevent that, the cordy tendini, they are going to get stretched. That means these two valves are going to close. So, auricular, ventricular valves close and because they are going to close because of the force of the blood which is coming from the ventricle 
they close with a sound and that creates the first heart sound close by making a sound and this sound is the first heart sound and it is known as la we'll compare la and da later on but the first heart sound is produced due to closure of the right auricular uh, ventricular wall and the left auricular ventricular wall or the mitral wall which we call it so this is when the first heart sound is produced when we compare these two sounds we'll talk about which is of a uh, higher duration longer duration and less that we will take up a little later now the next thing these two valves are closed that means the chances of blood from ventricle going to auricle is less or zero and first heart sound is produced now the blood has to be pumped into the main arteries that means these valves should open we name these valves as semi lunar valves so semi lunar valves of aorta and pulmonary artery they open so that the blood can be pumped into the main arteries now what has happened when ventricles were contracting to prevent the flow of blood from ventricles to the auricles auricular ventricular valves close and their closure is with a sound and that sound is the first heart sound now the blood has to find its way to the arteries to allow that the semi lunar valves of aorta as well as of pulmonary artery they open so that the blood goes into the main arteries the duration or the time period in which ventricular systole is completed is 0.3 seconds auricular systole is 0.1 seconds and this is 0.3 seconds now after this we will discuss what is going to happen in the next part